Yay, I think we are in business. Growth mindset, mathemagician, panthers. A little note for myself. Sometimes I'm going to let the slides speak for themselves because I talk too much sometimes. Shh. So be ready for some silence. Awkward, brave, and... Awkward, brave, and kind silence. We're going to find the GCF to help solve real world problems. I like all the sound effects. Probably a little over the top too, Mr. Hoffman, maybe. Okay, I'll try to balance it out a little bit. This is what we worked on, the first problem of the week of Tuesday, and we're still coming back to it because it's so important to like look at this carefully so we can grasp this, because when we can grasp this problem, it, all the other problems we're going to be doing will make a lot more sense because you'll see the patterns and the things that are the same within them. So we end, this is what we concluded with here. We did this three basket, three in each basket, three bananas in a basket, three apples in a basket. We'll need five baskets for the apples and six baskets for the bananas. And the picture would look something like this. We would have here, and let's go ahead and just so we can clarify, uh -huh. This would be three apples, three apples in a basket, three apples in a basket, three apples in a basket, three apples in a basket. How do you like them apples? Uh, yep, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Um, and so the early bird gets the worm from the apple. Uh, <laughs> and that's all I got for the moment. Okay, well, I'm kind of going bananas here. So while I'm at it, let's talk about some bananas. Three bananas in this basket. Three, 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 three. And that equals 18 bananas. Um, a basket case, I guess. What can I say? Alrighty. So, what are the words in here? And we determined, uh, some students came up. I wish I could remember the names of the exact students that came up and figured this out and the ones that wrote it in the chat, but I can't at the moment. So, what words in here? I don't, by, by the way, I am not a keywords fan. Not at all. I'm more about the, the noodle. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Doodle. Here we go. Doodle. Or if you draw little doodles, like little pictures to help you kind of figure things out, draw diagrams and things like that. Noodle, using your brain to kind of make sense of what you doodle. And then finally, the whole kit, which is a kit is your tools, your resources, and caboodle, which is going to other people and stealing their ideas. Because that's just caboodle, caboodle. Because boodle, caboodle is an old English word from the 1800s, 1700s for, you know, um, anyway, caboodle meant like stolen goods, like a treasure. And so that turned into the word, you know, the pirate word for treasure, a stolen, you know, which is their, their booty. I know it's kind of funny, right? Okay. Anyway, I like to doodle, noodle, and caboodle. But in this case, key words sometimes are really helpful. In this case, they are a particular case. Do you know what the key word in here that kind of hints you off and tips you off that this is going to be a problem about greatest common factor and we can use the factor ninja? Well, yes, that's right. It's this greatest number, right? Yeah, the greatest number thing. It's greatest. It's just like in the G. G for greatest common factor but the other it's not always if you see greatest it doesn't always mean that that's what you're going to be doing but another thing that tips you off is that it looks like at first rita has 15 apples and she wants to put the fruit in the baskets with each basket having the same that makes me think oh when usually when i see the word same it's going to be division because you want to break them up into equal pieces same number of pieces but this this is a type of division. It's a special type of division called the greatest common factor because that's really what we're doing. Because if you remember, the factor ninja likes to break things into pieces, which is dividing them into pieces. It's a special height. Okay. There it is. Whoop. They are each basket. Oh, here's something that somebody pointed out that I didn't catch the first time I read it. I think it was Eli, perhaps, that read this. Gosh, I wish I remember who did it. And they read it really slow on, like, all of the fruit. Because when we tried doing this problem once, we, we did it, but we had fruit left over that wasn't an equal amount. So that kind of like, oh, wait a minute, all of the fruit. Yeah, you can't be like, oh, let's just use some and get rid of the rest. Here's another one to consider. There are 36 boys and 48 girls on a math team. For the next competition, Mr. Hoffman would like to arrange all of the students. Ooh, that sounds familiar. All of the students uh, into equal. That is familiar. What color do we use here for that? I guess green. 
equal. That makes me, oh, this is going to be a division problem. That's easy. Let's just do, let's just stop right there. 48 divided by 36. 48 divided by 36. We're going to get some crazy number with fractions. And if you kind of did that, and then you actually look to see what they're asking for, what is the question? Say, what is the greatest number of students that can be in each row? Are you going to put a fraction of students in a row? Like one and a half boys, three and a half boys, uh, two and a half, two and three quarters, uh, three point seven six seven nine girls. It doesn't make sense. So what the heck kind of problem is this then? What are you trying to do here? Okay, well, that's why if you kind of make sense of the problem, noodle doodle, doodle noodle and kitten caboodle, get your resources. You'll see and you'll recognize this greatest number. And you'll kind of get the idea if you were to doodle this, you kind of like draw some rows and like, oh, I want to put so many boys in these and so many girls over here. And, and then, okay, hopefully this will pop out at you this. Here we go. Let's try this problem, shall we? Oh, we're going to use the distributive property method here. Height corrector ninja likes distributive property. Um, so what's going to go in here? Now, distributive property, we're going to see here. We're looking for the GCF to put in here. That's why we're going to, uh, I already started, didn't even know it. That's how, that's how advanced I am. I could multitask. <laughs> I can press a button on my remote control and not even realize I'm pressing it. That's pretty good. I'm pretty talented. Okay. So now we're going to get all the factors of 36 with this. What is this thing called? I can't remember what it's called, but it's a, it's something. You don't need to know what it's called. You just can do it, right? 2 and 18. I think it's a chart, factor chart maybe, T-chart. Yeah, all of these equal 36, 6 times 6, 36, 4 times 9, 36, 3 times 12, 36, 2 times 18, 36, and 1 times 36, 36. And let's do 48. There they are. There's all them. Factor Ninja loves it. Chop, chop into smaller pieces. Division. This is a type of division, too. Okay. Well, what about this one? Does 12 go into 48? Can we multiply something by 12 and get 48? Oh, yeah. We can, Let's see. 12. See, I, I got this 12 song. 12, 24, 36, 48. I'm going to sing the rest just because it's fun, and then I'll come back. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 70, 284. Mm, did I do that right? 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 70, 284, 96, 108, 120, that's great, and 132, and 144. Can you name the tune? All right. Anyway, back to this. So what is 48? 48 is, okay, it's the 1. 12 times 1 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 12 times 3 is 36. 12 times 4 is 48. We want the 4. So that's what goes over yonder. And so guess what we got here? What's the greatest common factor? It's 12. So we're going to pop that 12 in there. Now. How many times does 12 go into 36? Take a look over here. We already did it. Dump, bump, bump, bump. Put that in there. Three. Now, how many times does 12 bump, 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 go into 48? We already did it right over here. Bump, bump, bump. See, 12 times 4 is 48. I'm going to let the slides speak for themselves for a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's what that 12 means. Students in each row. What does that mean? Oliver uses the greatest common factor and the distributive property to rewrite the sum. Sum, get it? Sum. Not all jacks, not all jacks are funny. Not all math jokes are funny. Just sum. Ha <laughs> ha. This is how sum is supposed to be spelled. It's a pun. It's a punny. Okay. Oh, a wink and a smile. If you, there's a, I looked up a wink and a smile and this song came up. 
from the movie. Uh, it's from Harry Connick Jr. singing it. And he, he did, if you don't know who he is, there was a time where he was doing American Idol, and he's known for lots of other things. Uh, new, I think his New Orleans kind of person, and he, he is Sleepless in Seattle soundtrack, a classic rami commie. Do you remember the first five prime numbers? One, two, three, five, seven. Do that again, that was fun. One, two, three, five, seven. One, two, three, five, seven. One, two, three, five, seven. One, two, three, five, seven are the first five prime numbers. And the next level is See, all dogs go to heaven, seven. Turn it all the way up. Crank it up to... Oh, oh, my ears. That hurts. My funny looking ears. Quiet, number crazy 11. Oh, by the way, if you are a... I'm not sure I want to say this right. Triscodecophobiac? Um, Triska, Triska, a tisket, a tasket, uh, a Triska discophobiac in a basket. Let's see. Look away now. Whatever that, however you say that, look away now. Close the eyes. Look away. Go. Oh, here we go. Triskaidecophobia. How many syllables is that? That's pretty, that's pretty profound. Let's see. Let's count the syllables because we are in math class. Ready? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is also coincidentally and eerily a prime number. Seven syllable word that means fear of 13, which is also a prime number. Wow. Okay, note this is going to be really helpful. The only even prime number, right? What are even numbers? Any number that ends in 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Well, it doesn't end in 10. I mean, but it could. But the point here is that it would end in a 0, right? If it ends, if it ends in a 2, like maybe like 22, well, that's an even number. How do you know? Because it ends in a 2, which is, one, you know. And what about, uh, I don't know, 377? Not not an even number because it doesn't end in two, four, six, eight, or zero. That's one more. One more for fun. Ready? 
they're all fun. Who am I kidding? Oh, this is fun, right? I lied. It's not one more for fun. It's all of them for fun. One and for once and for all. Let's go, Mr. Hoffman. Okay, uh, let's try three thousand two hundred seventy six. Is that an even or an odd number? Yeah, you got me. It's even because it ends in a six. Okay. And by the way, so what's the only even prime number? The only number that's even that's prime. Well, yeah, it's two. That's it. All the other even numbers, all the way from 4, 6, 8, 12, 10, 12, all the way to uh, even infinity, whatever even infinity is. That's pretty deep thinking right there. Is there a such thing as even infinity? Well, if there is, all the way up to that. <laughs> whatever. I think it's just an idea. Uh, the idea that it just goes on and on and on. Oh, factor tree. You know, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm getting crazy about this factor tree. I never really used it before. But after this incident that happened yesterday with uh, some students in help session, I am now a big fan of the factor tree. Oh, let me back up to explain what's going on here. You probably already can tell, but um, basically we want to get all the prime factors, the prime factorization, a.k.a. factor trees. 24 is not a prime number, but let's break it down. I know I can divide it by 2 because it's even. All even numbers are divisible by 2, so 2 and 12. Aha, so I got 2 as a prime, 12 is not a prime because it's even. We can break it down some more. I try two again because I know even two and six. If it wasn't even, I could do three. It just so happens you could do a three with twelve if you wanted. You could have put a three, a three here if you wanted. You know, you could have, could have, should have, would have done that. No, I, I just like to do twos. I like to, do, I only like to do threes if I have to. <laughs> Get it? Have to? Oh my god! But I don't have two, so I'm going to have three. No, I don't have two, so I'm going to two. There we go. Oh, well, guess what? Now I'm gonna get ahead of three in here. No, now they're both prime. So all prime. So this is the prime factorization. Oh, let's get a different color. This is the prime factorization. And I like it a nice dark color, but uh, different than red. Sort of like a blue, dark blue. This is the prime factorization for 24. You just have to put a times, a times, times. So this would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Now let's go to 18. Mm, I love my twos. You don't have to. I get to. I get to. See, that's, by the way, really quick. I just want to interject. A lot of people say, I have to do this. I have, have to. I have to do so on and so on. I have to do my homework. I have to do the chores. I have to go to work. I, you know what? Just change that word have. Just try it. Just try it for a few days or even a week. I'm telling you, it'll change your, it'll change your life. I get to do or this that and so on like i have to go right now because my my wife's coming home and i gotta I, I have to get her stuff together and there's a get there but what i'm saying is i get to get her stuff together for her that's that's a wonderful thing you know because that's my wife i'm gonna make her happy just like mama you gotta make mama happy you gotta make mama happy you gotta keep mama happy okay back to the lesson which this is actually kind of part of the lesson and i'll find a way to make a connection at some point but for the meantime we have we have to get back to work. We get to get back to this lesson. See? There I knew I would get to it eventually. Okay. Nine. See, this is one of those cases. I can't do two here. So I get to use three. Yay! See? Who knew? Who knew that would come in so handy? Three and three. But it just so happens. Wow. One, two, three, one, two, three, five, seven, one, two, three, five, seven, then we got 11, and now you know 13. Oh my goodness, you guys are getting so good at this. Oh yeah, I'm just pointing out, see how it has the twos in common? It only has one two in common. Now you could say, well, Mr. Hoffman, what about this two? Well, there's no other twos over here. Well, what about this two? There's no other twos over here. What about this three? We're getting to the three, okay? We're gonna get to the three. Just give me a moment. Oh, there they are. See, I told you it was going to get to the threes. What about this three? Well, there's no other threes over here. So we only get to, like, you know, connect these two, and we can connect these two. So this is why am I might doing that? Because this is where the magic happens. Watch this. Ready? Magic, magic. Two times, see, the three equals, this is where the magic comes. Six. Meow. Oh, there we go. GCF. That's the GCF. 
isn't it? I mean, that's so much easier to me than trying to figure out what are the other, and you can miss factors. If you, if you do this, you know you're going to get the greatest common factor. Now, there's all the other factors that just doesn't necessarily give you, but it gives you, it's like guarantee. If you, if you follow the, the be a factor ninja, you are guaranteed. Well, I guess there's no guarantees in life, but uh, as close as you can get to being guaranteed. Now, this is the problem I did with the student. This is why I'm becoming a big factor tree maniac. I want to climb all the factor trees with, and with all the bananas in the factor trees. And, and I want to be a ninja that, that, that sneaks around in trees and jumps from tree to tree and has bonsai trees. And you know what a bonsai tree is? Well, I'm going to show you pretty soon. It's not just a Chinese karate kid thing. It's also a Japanese. Japan, of course, it started in China first, but now the Japanese also have bon, bonsai trees way back before I think we were even a country here in the United States. Uh, okay, where were we? Oh, yes. Okay, so this is what we did. We took 52, right? And we got all the factors of 52, like 1 times 52, and a circle 2 times 26. And then that's all we could come up with, right? We did all this work, all this division. We spent a long time, so we couldn't think of any more. Then we did 64. We did 1 times 64. Oh, this was a little bit easier. I don't know why. 2 times 32, 4 times 16, 8 times 8, and that's all we had. And then we thought, oh, so the greatest common factor is this 2. As you can see, that's what we did. There were no other ones, so we put the 2 there. When we did all this work, we found out that 2 times 26 is 52. Then we said 2 times 32 is 64, and then so then we came up with this. See, this is how we did it. We, made it, we did this little T-chart thing. Yeah, pretty cool, right? And then we found, oh, there's the 2. Boom, boom. So that's what goes here. Let his slides speak for themselves. And this is the answer that we put in. And we're like, so proud. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I said, oh, go ahead, student. Put that in. Let's watch it. Share your screen. And it put it in. And guess what? Even though this is a valid way to represent what's, what, this, what this is saying, it's missing something. It's missing this. It's missing the GCF because it's two is not the GCF. It is a factor. And this makes sense. It works. But boom, it marked it wrong. I was like, what? We probably spent like 30 minutes on this problem. Yeah, that's this is why I am a huge. Hi, Mr. Hoffman. Try the factor tree method. There's, this is a bonsai tree right here. Yeah, bonsai tree right there. Okay. Uh, prime factorization. It's also the factor tree. Find the greatest common factor to help avoid missing factors. And you're going to see exactly what we missed in a few moments here. Uh, well, <laughs> a lot of few moments. Let's say many few moments, especially with the bigger numbers or numbers you're not sure about. Because I kind of kept looking at this. I kept looking at this. I'm like, Wait, is that all there is for 52? There's got to be more factors. And we just couldn't think of them fast enough. And we were already tired. It's been a long day. So this, this would have saved us, though. This is what have saved us right here. So this is what we did right here, all of this. This is what we came up with. Now, factor tree method is going to be happening right here and here. Look, we're going to build some bonsai trees. Wax on, wax off. Well, we're kind of mixing up our our countries here, Japan and China. But either way, let's keep going with this. That's a fun thing. Bonsai. Even number, yeah. Let them speak for themselves. Tristecophobia. Yeah, there it is. Tris Kai, I forgot the Kai. Tris Kai, deck ufobia. Tris Kai, Tris Kai, Tris Kai, Tris Kai, deck ufobia. Tris Kai, deck ufobia. Prime number. I love to do the twos when I can. Twos are fun. Twice as fun as one. Don't tell one I said that.
easy peasy lemon squeezy talk dopey bashful grumpy sleepy happy sneezy and jokes that are macaroni and cheesy Hi. so we came up with the greatest factors too when in actuality it is four oops there it is so then we now I could do some division, but at least this now I'm doing division with stuff that I know is right and not stuff I'm doing with all their division that I don't even know if it's going to be necessary. So it, it's not as bad because in the end I'm doing the work, but I know I'm going to get the right answer, not like last time. So sometimes you got to work harder. Sometimes you got to work smarter. Sometimes you got to do both. This is a little bit of a combination of both, but definitely this is a smarter way, in my opinion, when you kind of see some 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 numbers like 52 and 64 and you're just not sure what all the factors are Whew. by the way here's a little bit of division stuff going on here this is a division let me draw division man real quick for you because that's an awesome thing division man helps you know the steps of long division we start off with some eyes there's the eyes which is divide all right and we got this little face going here right here then the nose is multiply, the mouth is subtract, okay? All right, so what happened so far here? I'm gonna back up, where's the divide? Here's the divide, here, here's the eyes. Okay, and I like to say goes into, it makes more sense when you're kind of dividing this way. How many times does four go into five? It goes in there one time. Now, see, we did the eyes of division person, division man, division woman, division. Okay, let's see here. Now we're going to do the nose, which is a multiplication sign. Yep. So one times four, and we're going to put that product. See, these are the factors. We're going to put the product in the basement right there. See, this is the house. The house, the house, the house. This is like the roof. We got a one on the roof. That's the that's the other factor, right? Factors on the roof, products in the basement. Factors on the roof, products in the basement. Okay, so what do we got so far? We've did our division. We did our multiplying. Now we're going to subtract. See how it's coming together? It looks almost like a clown there, doesn't it? Division clown. Hmm. It's supposed to be like a superhero to help you, but I guess clowns can help you laugh, but some people are afraid of clowns. There's triskaidekaphobia, which is a fear of the number 13. I know, I know there's a word for the fear of clowns, too. Whew. Okay, uh, where were we? Subtract. Okay, now this, this step. So let's put let's put division man all together here. We've got or division person, division thing, division clown. Like this. Uh, okay. And the divide, which is goes into, multiply, subtract. Here's the head. Ooh, this is a really funny looking division person. I'm trying to do a 3DS on here. Then you have the body. It's going to be really funny because I don't have a lot of room to put the body. The body is really just the bring down part, right? Uh, it's going to be definitely disproportionate which means not proportional which means like sort of like a baby its head's disproportionate babies have big heads right no oh, mine's gonna cover up here uh, but their bodies tend to grow into their heads eventually right for babies trying to do this 3d thing eh, it's a little off and then you can put some arms what yeah it's legs <laughs> oh gosh okay so anyway the point here is first we divide then we multiply then we subtract which we already did that then we bring down I went, see i got this uh, blue we bring down and that's what this is bring down the two then we start all over but you might be going four goes into two four doesn't go into two so i don't understand mr hoffman it, well, what you're going to do, is, this is a really cool, fun thing right here. You're just going to keep following down to this tube, which includes the one. So really, you're saying four goes into 12 how many times? And then you just put the product. Remember, we said products go on the roof. No, darn it. I said that wrong. Factor. The factor. The factor on the roof. 
factor on the roof and the product will go underneath down here in the basement which is the basement keeps getting deeper and deeper okay so here we go four goes into two no four goes into 12 how many times four goes into 12 three times there we go now multiply division person see product in the basement factors products factors products factors products now we gotta subtract and remainder zero now we know we're done that see i did that division but it works now i'm gonna let the slides speak for themselves Okay, does this look familiar? Something I think from third grade, when you decompose numbers, we're gonna keep the five here. We could eliminate this one. What do you think? Which, is, which one is it? So the 42 is really 40 plus 52, no. Eight plus 12, eight plus two, no. There it is, 40, so it'd be like this. We got five here, and we just break down the 42 into 40 plus two. So when you fill that, oh, let's back in, when you fill that in, this is really five times 40, the disappear of zero trick, five times four, five times 40, right? Let's do the disappear of zero trick. We're gonna pretend like the zero's not here for a second or a little bit longer in a second, but anyway, five times four is 20. All right, gotta put the zero back on. So I gotta put the zero back on right here. 200, so this is 200. And then five times two, five times two is 10. Add them together, the answer is 210. That is kind of a fun mental way to do, a fun way to kind of do mental math with this, uh, I think it was called an array, I believe. Uh, box method also known as and this here we take the 40 and break it into pieces is called a uh, decomposition we decompose this number into its smaller pieces like composition comp position is putting it together composition you compose something like a, a piece of art or something or a writing you put something together if you d put the d in front of compose you're taking it apart decompose it and there's also a compost pile when you when you know food decomposes and stuff like that okay animals Ugh, that's sad though so i like to think of this distributive property as as a gift it's kind of like oprah you get a gift and you get a gift right you get a gift, you get a gift, you get a gift, you get a gift. Everybody gets a gift. And so they end up with gifts. Yay! What's multiplication? That's it for now. Wink and a smile. See you later.